Okay, so Pi News 86. So a lot has happened since the last Pi News, Pi News 85, just over a month ago. 52 Pi sent me the water cooling option for Raspberry Pi 5, which was very cool. I also got sent three PCIe NVMe boards from Geekworm. We had a new S with Parrot OS. We had another OS with Pi Mega, which is an incredible Amiga experience on the Raspberry Pi. I tried overclocking the Pi 5 to 3.4 as I had the water cooling. We had Fide OS, which is a really good beginner OS, uh, really, really functional, really great performance on a Raspberry Pi, and it now supports dual screen. I tested the NVMe drives that work with the Raspberry Pi 5 because there's a lot of NVMe drives that aren't compatible and there's a whole list in this description. And it also showed how to set up pin OS, so a multi-boot OS, just using an Android phone. And then we had the huge RetroPi build, this 512 gig RetroPi build, which was fully loaded with all sorts of games. And just recently we had Lineage OS 21, which is Android 14 on Raspberry Pi 5, but Lineage OS is a much better version than the early AOSP versions that we get. It's a much more polished experience. But we also have Diet Pi releasing for the Raspberry Pi 5. And Diet Pi is a very lightweight operating system, but also has a very clever installer that allows you to install all sorts of different functionality into your Raspberry Pi 5. I've got a separate video on Raspberry Pi 4, but obviously I aim to have a look at the Pi 5 version in the near future. This is Dospian 2.5, which allows you to play old DOS games on a Raspberry Pi 5, and it works great on a Raspberry Pi 4 as well. I decided to install it on an NVMe drive, 240 gig, although I clearly don't need that much space. And I'll definitely do a longer video, but uh, I found that if you exit out of this and then launch DOSBox staging, the performance is much better. So I can now start my game. So rally high. This is Rally Series Worldwide from 1997. And we have all sorts of cars. It's pretty playable, although you do tend to crash off the sides of the track. Oh, look at that, look at that crash. <laughs> That's the Porsche. And if you want to know how to get set up and started, Watch this video, Dospian486, how to install, shows you how to put games on, launch them and so on. I also, before, put uh, Windows 95 on the Raspberry Pi 4 and I also tested 16 DOS games on the Raspberry Pi 4. So uh, I will be doing a more detailed video on Pi 5 at some point. I just want to play around with what games I can get working. So we had this rather cool story from Tom's Hardware. Vapor coating lets Raspberry Pi run underwater without slimy or sticky feeling. So it's a vapor coating with paraline and it allows a Pi to function underwater. Now there's other products a bit like this, but this one is new. A company called HZO demonstrated the effects of its waterproofing process by running a Raspberry Pi 4 in a tank of water. And this sort of thing has been done before by quite a few people, but they say the waterproofing doesn't last forever and the electronics become extremely slimy to the touch. But when HZO apply their coating, the reporter said they touched them and they couldn't tell there was anything on them. It's obviously not for everybody this, but if you are using a Pi in sort of more extreme conditions, then it may be interesting. Raspberry Pi in their news showed a rather nice SD card holder, which is 3D printed and you can see it screws together and holds quite a few cards. So I always like to see things being 3D printed out. I often get asked about these SD card holders, which I mentioned in an older version of Pi News. They are really, really handy and were sent to me by a subscriber. So we've got some more very nice cooling for the Raspberry Pi 5. This is in Tom's hardware again. Uh, Raspberry Pi 5 de-lidded and topped with Peltier element for the ultimate cooling test. So you can see there's various pictures of the testing here. There's a little 3D printed part at the top. This is the de-lidded Pi. You can see the, the metal part on top of the CPU has been taken off and there's some protective tape around it. It's a very nice looking copper cooler. And I've mentioned Peltier coolers um, in previous Pi News. A thermoelectric cooler that uses the Peltier effect. The hot side of the element connects to the heatsink and the cool to the SOC. Flow a little DC current and your Raspberry Pi 5 gets a cooling boost. But there's no fans and they call this passive cooling. And it looks like he's running more tests. A bit of retro gaming, uh, also from Tom's Hardware. Raspberry Pi powers Reboy Game Boy Color drop-in kit. And if we scroll down through Raspberry Pi Zero in here, I need to do more Raspberry Pi Zero 2W videos because 
They are available. I believe they're available. Let's just have a look on RPI locator. Yeah, really good stock on Raspberry Pi Zero 2Ws. A really good priced device, but for retro gaming and also Pi projects, it's brilliant. Um, but I think Pi 5s are also, yeah, Pi 5s are also decent as well. Look, they are in stock in a lot of places. There's loads of ticks, Pi 4s and so on. But there's actually inside here an RP2040 microcontroller that's used to handle input from the original Game Boy Color buttons. There's loads of RP2040s cropping up as becoming an interface between an older device uh, and a newer device which is really good so i'll put a link in the description if you're interested in doing that raspberry pi's own site covered this handheld zx spectrum and it's nice to see the tradition of a zx spectrum having an awful keyboard <laughs> because they always did have in back in the day but uh, it's a brilliant device and what's really impressive with this is it's being controlled by a raspberry pi pico and it doesn't just run Spectrum, it runs some other older systems as well. It does look really nice, like the little control joystick here on it. And you've got USB, SD card, there's a headphone jack there. 2.8 inch display. And here's other systems that it runs, Commodore 64, Atari 2600, ColecoVision. And this is a nice image as well, a joystick port. We've got a USB-A connector on there and also a monitor output, VGA monitor output as well. Yeah, really nice. From Hackster.io, a bit more gaming. So this is a Pi SX, which is an original PlayStation, but with a Raspberry Pi inside. And the power buttons and the, uh, so these buttons work. Well, obviously the eject button just opens the lid, um, but that adds extra cooling and also access to the USB ports. The power button switches on the Pi. It even supports the original PlayStation game pads as well. Very cool. More from Hackster.io. And uh, this is a way of getting Drives larger than two terabyte to work on a Raspberry Pi 5, uh, specifically NVMe drives. So I haven't tried any drives. I haven't got any drives that big uh, in NVMe, but uh, this does allow you to do it. And uh, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in using a larger drive. This is a cool one and a cool video. Raspberry Pi powers first driverless car in Formula SAE Brazil competition. So it's a student team from the Federal University of Santa Catarina, Brazil. And if we scroll down through, so this is, there is a pie in here somewhere, and this is an autonomous car that's racing around a track. And if you have a look at the video, it's, uh, I'll play a tiny bit of it, but I'll also link this story so you can watch the whole video. It's pretty fast. Well, I don't know if that's running at right speed. Okay, so it wasn't running as fast as it looked in the video, but still very impressive nonetheless. I'm happy to say I was featured in the Magpie magazine. Uh, so this is issue 137, which you'll find it under Bookshelf. So if you type in Bookshelf on KDE Plasma or have a look on Raspberry Pi OS, this is a way of downloading all the magazines. And if I open it up, I'm on page 18, world's first Raspberry Pi 5 tablet. And I sent them a picture but they didn't really show the whole of the picture that I sent. I actually sent this one with my bespoke Raspberry Pi necklace with my limited edition blue Raspberry Pi, my red Raspberry Pi from China, and my original UK one. But I was pleased to be featured in there, and they showed some of the screenshots and things like that. And I've done a few more things with the Raspad since then. I wasn't expecting a Raspberry Pi Pico smartwatch, but here it is. It's called the Wear Pico, and it works with a smartphone and interacts with a mobile app. And you can manage calls, receive notifications. It's got a stopwatch, a notepad, a calendar, and more, which is listed in the GitHub. And it uses Bluetooth. And there's a GitHub project if you're looking to do the same sort of thing yourself. We also had a video player inside a VHS tape. And you can see it's got composite video connections. And here's a nice internal shot. So it's using a Pi 3A+. And it's got all the connectivity here and also an LED display. Adafruit had this story. Michael Clements has uh, a tiny cyber deck using a Raspberry Pi. So this is a Pi 4B with a Pimeroni hyperpixel display and a BlackBerry keyboard. And there's a video linked as well. This was an unexpected one. So from XDA, uh, it's a Raspberry Pi 4 that can generate AI art on your TV. And I think if I play a little bit of the video, because there's one bit that kind of shows exactly what it does. 40%. Chipmunks had a birthday party with balloons and streamers. 
and there you go. It is incredible what you can create with AI, uh, just with text, just, you know, this background was created with AI and uh, it's just so simple. I use the Copilot app on the iPad. It's just amazing that you can ask it to do something and it and it, the speed that it comes up is incredible. As always, links in the description if you're looking for more details on that project. And there's details on the Raspberry Pi M.2 hat, uh, which is the NVMe board which doesn't have a connector. I'm sure it should have a connector between here and here. And it talks about why NVMe is so much faster on a Raspberry Pi 5. Also says why they didn't add an M.2 connector to the Pi 5. It's large, relatively expensive, and would require us to provide a 3.3 volt, 3 amp power supply. Using a small, low cost FFC connector allowed us to provide a PCIe interface without growing the board or imposing the cost of an M.2 connector. And it's supporting power supply circuitry on every Pi user and an official M.2 M key hat is in the final stage of prototyping. So hopefully I'll get one of those soon to test. And we saw a powered by Raspberry Pi connector for the flipper, introducing video game module powered by Raspberry Pi. And this again is using the RP2040. And they overclocked the microcontroller so it could generate a video signal. So it's got a video out port to connect to a TV. It's got motion tracking. And so as you can see, you can plug it into a large screen TV. Here's the accelerometer in use. It's even got some external connectivity to make it into a simple digital oscilloscope. It's currently $49. A nice network attached storage with the Raspberry Pi inside. So it's 3D printed, 10 terabyte capacity with a little OLED display. So we've got a nice internal shot of it to see what's going on inside. So it's built with the Raspberry Pi 5 in mind, but it should be compatible with earlier Raspberry Pis. It's got a 60 millimeter fan in there. And we've got another Game Boy, uh, this time so small. Shared by maker Elliot Cole over at YouTube. According to Cole, he was looking through AliExpress when he came across this extra small retro gaming emulator handheld that appears to feature a Raspberry Pi RP2040 microprocessor. The product listing appeared to feature a custom PCB that upon close inspection appears to have an RP2040. And you can see the little Raspberry Pi logo there. The listing was for around $85 and came with very little in the way of instructions. The device sports a typical D-pad as well as A, B, start and select buttons. And there's a video on it which again is linked. And this next story is Raspberry Pi OS rather than Raspberry Pi and uh, it's because they've managed to install Raspberry Pi OS onto a Surface RT and there's instructions in here. Now I really liked the Surface RT when it first came out. It was running, uh, I think it was Windows 8, but it was an ARM version of Windows 8, really quite some time ago. What does it say? It came with, so it must be 2013, I guess? No, 2012 it came out. But it really did feel like a nice snappy device uh, and really pleasant to use. But because it was using ARM all the way back then, it did tend to get slow pretty quickly as Windows updates didn't support it. Uh, and since then they've used x86 or x64 processors in the surfaces. Although it looks like quite a lot of manufacturers are definitely going back to ARM, like Apple have done, uh, and so we're going to start to see more ARM-based devices being released designed to run Windows, which hopefully will mean better support for Windows on Raspberry Pi as time goes on. But yeah, if, it's, if you're interested in picking up a Surface RT, which I'm sure you can get very cheap, uh, and I'm sure that Raspberry Pi OS will run on it very well because it's such a lightweight operating system designed for ARM. Well, it's quite tempting. 35 quid in CEX. You get a two year guarantee with CEX as well. So it was two gig of RAM, NVIDIA Tegra 3. Let's just see if they've got one near me. Okay, not Barnstable. St. Austin is the nearest to me, that's quite a way. So this is what they've sold for on eBay, 32 pound. Some non-working ones there, 21 pound. Well, you can get them cheap. That doesn't say non-working, 16 pounds. And it does look like it's working. I might have to have a look at that. And from CNX Software, uh, 52 Pi have released a PCIe expansion board for the Pi 5 uh, with a PCIe times one slot. So this is Gen 2 and Gen 3 speeds, allowing you to install various off-the-shelf accessories like network cards, USB expansions, and more. You can even use a PCIe riser to connect a GPU with standard PC products. That's a Jeff Geerling thing rather than me. And if we scroll down, you see it looks pretty cool. Another different cable to go from the PCIe connector. And it's getting power from the GPIO pins. 
And there's some pictures here of it with a network card. This was an interesting story. Maker uses Raspberry Pi and AI to block noisy neighbors' music by hacking nearby Bluetooth speakers. So apparently this Bluetooth jamming device is a Raspberry Pi 3B+. It's got an OLED display. Audio is observed with a USB microphone while a push button handles the system. And it uses AI to detect reggaeton music, which was specific to what his neighbors were playing. And it interferes with nearby Bluetooth speakers so the audio is distorted. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have any noisy neighbors to have the need for that project. And the Raspberry Pi is 12 years old now. Uh, and because it was launched on a leap year, they, they uh, talk about it being three years old. But yeah, 12 years old. Initial run of 10,000 boards. And they've since sold 57 million. Some nice figures here, look. Raspberry Pi 3B, 3A and 3B+, 23 million. Pico, 4 million. Other Pi models, 34 million. Interesting to know what the Pi 4 is in that scale. This is a nice image of a load of Pis. There's loads more information in that story, so again, linked in the description. This is uh, a piece of old hi-fi equipment being turned into a music streamer. Raspberry Pi transforms old radio into audiophile grade network music streamer. And you can see there's lots of space inside here. But it's actually connected to uh, various buttons and I think the display as well. Uh, the Audiophile Pi works by retrieving audio files from a nearby NAS device and playing them through whatever speaker it's system it's connected to. They use much of the original hardware including the housing as well as the front panel of buttons. Should work with as low as a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. The LCD screen tells you what music is playing. There is a video linked and there's a breakdown on Hackster. And last up, this showed up on Facebook, Frostbite. Uh, so more water cooling for Raspberry Pis. And this is a Kickstarter campaign. Oh, Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. And you can see it does look very nice. I like the blue. I guess that's coloured water in there. Yeah, because it's going all the way through. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.